Hello and welcome to today's video. This is all part of a series of videos we're doing which covers the setup and the running of the NC4 tool setter. Today we are looking at profile checking. Now some of you may or may not have noticed that we actually stood in front of a different machine uh, but the user inputs to run the cycles are exactly the same. So again, we have Ian with us today. He has all the technical know-how and the knowledge when it comes to the NC4. So Ian, what is uh, profile checking? So profile checking is really an enhanced broken tool cycle. But unlike our standard broken tool cycles where we are just checking the tool length for tolerance, here we can check the whole profile of the tool by driving the laser spot inside or outside the tool profile. And like our standard broken tool cycles, we normally use this cycle after the tool is cut, just before we put the tool away back in the carousel. This sounds quite similar to um, an edge checking cycle we did on a previous video, where we check along the edges for chips. It's similar, yes. Um, with the edge checking cycle, we measured the tool and then we scanned at the side of the tool, checking for chipped edges. But this cycle is more flexible. You can check different profiles from simple straight lines to curves. Um, and as I said already, it's designed to be used after the tool is cut before you put it away. And are we measuring the tool in this cycle? No, uh, like our standard broken tool cycles, the tool needs to be measured beforehand. So the value in the tool offset has to be good before running this profile check cycle. So is there anything else that the viewers need to know about this cycle? Because I know it has a bit of a reputation for being a bit complex. Yes, well, the first thing is this cycle needs a function called latch mode enabled, and that is done by the installer. And we've talked about this when we uh, did our edge check video. And the second thing is if I was to use an analogy, all of our other cycles are like a normal family SUV car, okay? They're quite forgiving. This cycle is like a supercar. Okay. Everything needs to be precise and set up correctly to achieve good performance. I like your analogy there. Um, there's a few things that you mentioned which I wouldn't mind clarifying. First of all, how do you know whether latch mode is enabled or not? Well, there are two ways. The first way is to take um, a tool that you know is correct, like a calibration tool, and run a simple check, maybe just a line at the edge of the calibration tool. Um, if it always fails, you know that latch mode isn't connected. The second way is to do the same thing again with the calibration tool, but this time watch the LEDs on top of the NC units. Now, if you see the LEDs turn to violet, you know that latch mode is connected and working because violet means latch mode is active. Okay, um, you also mentioned about the cycle setup having to be precise, or as you refer to it, the supercar. Uh, to achieve good performance, but if there was any tool run out, would that affect it? Yes, if the tool has run out, this cycle will likely see it. And then the cycle will stop with an alarm. Later on, then the operator will arrive, inspect the tool by eye, see no damage, and then assume the cycle isn't working correctly. Ah, right, okay. And I'm also assuming you need constant spindle speed to also achieve good performance. Yes, this cycle relies on precise timing between the spindle RPM and the NC4 unit. So if the spindle speed is fluctuating, again, the cycle will assume there's damage to the tool, stop with an alarm. When the operator arrives, he'll inspect the tool, see no damage and assume the cycle isn't working again correctly. Okay, thanks for clarifying that, Ian. So we have four tools in the carousel that we want to do a profile check on. Our first tool is a 12 millimeter spot drill we know it's good, so it should pass. Uh, the second tool is a 10 millimeter bore nose. Again, it's a good tool. Uh, the third tool is a 10 millimeter bore nose again, but this time it's slightly chipped. So we're confident the cycle will pick it up and issue an alarm. The fourth tool is a very complex profile tool, and it's really to demonstrate the flexibility of this cycle. So we'll start with the first tool, which is a 12 millimeter spot drill. We want to check up the inside edge of the tool to uh, look for any chips. Okay, so this is probably the simplest check a customer can make. Uh, and I've prepared a program and you'll notice I've made the tool offset active before programming the cycle. Remember, this is very important for this cycle. 
First, we want to type in G65 P9865, which is the name of the cycle. Um, then B1, this means we want to check inside the tool profile. Uh, if we wanted to check outside, we'd use B2. And if we wanted to check both inside and outside, we'd use B3. Hang on, Ian, sorry, can I interrupt you there? You're talking about outside and inside and inside now. What, what are you on about? <laughs> well, let's imagine you had a tool and you wanted to check it for chips. What you'd want to do is drive the laser inside the tool profile, looking for daylight effectively. Um, that would be a B1. But maybe you wanted to check that nothing had stuck to the tool, like swarf, uh, or any swarf had nested around the tool. You'd want to drive the laser spot down the outside of the tool. So that would be a B2. And if you used a B3, you would drive the laser spot first on the inside, looking for chips, and then on the outside, looking for something welded to the outside of the tool. So I guess the offset or the distance you travel on the inside of the tool or the outside of the tool, that's your tolerance? Yes, so the K value is our tolerance. And uh, like our other cycles, if you don't input a K, then 25 microns is assumed. And the other inputs are uh, C, uh, which is the number of teeth. We've got two teeth today, so I've entered C2. Q is the angle of the scan. So we want to scan up a 45 degree angle, so I've entered Q45. H is the distance from the bottom of the tool where we want the scan to start, so I've entered H1, one millimetre up. And Y is the radial distance where you want the scan to start, so I've entered one, which is the distance from the centre of the tool to where you want the scan to begin. And then finally, X, we've got the distance we want to scan along. So in this case, we want to scan five millimetres up the tool, so I've entered X5. And I guess there's other inputs as well, which you haven't entered, which uses default values like uh, spindle speed, for instance. Yes, we'll talk about some of the other inputs later on. This is really the simplest check you can make. Okay, so let's press cycle start. Okay. All right, so the 9865 has checked along the inside edge at that 45 degree angle and no alarms have been issued, which tells us the tool is good. Yes, the tool has passed. We saw the tool enter the beam. Then we saw the uh, LEDs on top of the unit turn violet as the laser spot moved up that 45 degree angle. And violet means good. Yes, so we saw the tool come into the beam. There's a very quick blink of red. Then we saw the LEDs turn to violet to the end of the cycle, which is good. However, if during that movement we see them change from violet to red, then that's the point where a defect has been detected. Okay, that's interesting. So these LEDs, they're pretty useful then in this cycle? Yes, it's a good way to understand what's actually happening with the cycle. And if things aren't going as planned, they're very useful for troubleshooting. Okay, so that's our first tour checked. On to our second tool, which is the 10 millimeter bore nose. As I said earlier, it's a good tool. So Ian, over to you. Okay, so we have the cycle name, uh, G65 P9865. B3 means we want to check both inside the profile and outside the profile. C is the number of teeth, two in this case. J is the start angle for the check, 15 degrees. Q is the end angle of the check, 90 degrees. H is the distance from the bottom of the tool where the center of the radius is struck from. R is the radius. X is the distance beyond the radius we want to check. In this case, I don't want to check any further up the tool, so I've put X zero. And then finally, Y is the distance between the center of the radius and the center of the spindle. In this case, we're on the center line, so it's Y zero. All right, nice. So no alarm has been issued, which tells us the tool has got no chips in it. There's nothing welded to it as we did a check inside and out. So let's move to our third tool now, which again is a bore nose, but we know there's a chip in it. So this cycle will tell us so and issue an alarm. So Ian, over to you. 
Okay, so I don't need to change the program because the tool is physically the same shape as the last tool and we want to also check inside and outside. So we're ready to go. I can press cycle start. Ah, so as expected, we have an alarm and I did actually see the LEDs change from violet to red. It was about halfway around that profile, so that mm. tells us that's where the chip is. Yeah. But in a lights out situation, can we suppress that alarm just like our other cycles? Yes, you can. Um, if we'd have added the M1 input to that program line, the alarm would have been suppressed and the cycle would have set hash 148. Then the customer could interrogate hash 148 or the programmer um, we've shown how to do this in our previous videos and this cycle works exactly the same. Okay, so on to our last tool of the day. This is the complex profile tool, but this isn't a real tool, is it? No, it's a tool that we've made in-house to demonstrate how you can link several cycles together and check really complex profiles. Okay, so to profile check this tool, which can be perceived as complicated, we need to break it down into two separate checks thus simplifying the whole process. So let's check the ball nose part of the tool first, which we previously uh, checked before. I mean, um, let's check the inside of the tool, then outside the tool, and then move on to our second check, keeping the tool in the beam, so not returning home. Let's check the internal radius, the inside and out. So Ian, how do we program this? Okay, so as mentioned, we've got two checks here. The first check is to check the ball nose section, we start with the program name, which is uh, G65P9865. B3, we've already talked about, means check inside and outside the profile. C2 is the number of teeth. H is the distance from the end of the tool, where the radius center is. R is the radius. J15 is the start angle. Q90 is the end angle. X is the distance we want to travel beyond the radius in a straight line. Y is where the center of the radius is in relationship to the spindle center line, which is Y0 in this case, and a new input, which is Z0, which is to do with how you want to keep the tool in the beam at the end of the cycle. By typing in Z0, the tool will not retract, so we're ready for a subsequent check. Okay, and then moving on to the second check, which is the internal radius. Again, the name is the same, G65P9865. Uh, we have had some new inputs here, B4, B5, and B6, which are the equivalent of B1, B2, and B3, apart from the means the cycle does not retract to the home position at the start. So it means, again, we're keeping the tool in the laser beam. C is the number of teeth, two. R is the radius of the internal radius. In this case, it's a minus value, which tells the cycle it's an internal radius rather than an external. J is the start angle, J180. Q270 is the end angle. H is the distance from the bottom of the tool where the center of the radius is struck from. X is the distance beyond the radius we want to scan, in this case, three millimeters. And Y is the distance of the radius center in relationship to the spindle center line. In this case, it's 20 millimeters. Okay, so let's hit cycle start. Okay.
Okay, so that's the final tool done today. It's not as complex as I first thought, so thanks to you, Ian. Hope this video has been of some use to you today. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and remember, happy tool setting.